accordion. I was actually a member of Destiny's Child uh, in the early days, but due to a change in kind of marketing direction, I was sort of ousted before the release of kind of the first album. Um, but it was a great time, obviously. So I was asked on Patreon by Thomas. He asked me to kind of maybe talk about uh, legato stuff a little bit and what happens when people are doing kind of fast runs. So I thought it'd be a, a good topic to kind of talk about um, and I'll do some demonstrating and things like that. Hopefully you enjoy the sort of stuff that I'm doing on the channel. Hopefully it should be fairly useful and interesting if you're into guitar stuff. Mondays I do a lick lesson which is going to be useful for this kind of specific topic. Wednesdays I sometimes do a what I'm working on video which is basically what this is going to be and then Fridays I do a chord video and Sundays I do a jazz video uh, and all of those have support in kind of PDFs and backing tracks and stuff that go off on Patreon. So hopefully it's worth uh, liking and subscribing but also hopefully if you're into it there's a Patreon where you can get, kind of get all of that stuff if you wanted it and backing tracks. Um, that's the hard sell. <coughs> I don't really know the percentages and stuff, but there there definitely are people that prepare solos and stuff like that. Um, so you might see someone doing this crazy fast run and it may or may not be improvised or um, for some people it definitely won't be. You know, some people do just plan out a solo and record a solo and, you know, they practice that thing, got it up to speed and all that stuff. There are players like Tom Quayle, for instance, I know for sure kind of improvises loads of his stuff. Um, so that is just off the cuff licks and you know players like Alan Holdsworth and these kind of players you don't see play the same solo twice so I'm more interested in those guys to be honest because that's where I can see spontaneity and that's where also I think you can start to, to kind of pick apart the process and figure out what it is that they've practiced or, or that sort of stuff and Alan Holdsworth does talk about this um, and I imagine Tom Quayle does as well. Particularly if you're into or want to get into the legato thing, I'm not sure that there's anyone out there that's particularly gone in, in depth as much as Tom Quayle. And although he's doing the tuning in fourth thing, I think in his tuitional stuff, he makes it guitar friendly for everyone anyway. So if you are wanting to kind of get super into the legato chops thing, I have personally haven't used it but I've broken down some of Tom's licks and certainly in the early days there's a few kind of whole Tom Quayle licks that I, I kind of took apart and looked at um, so I think probably it'd be a very good place to start and as someone who is super focused in that area and has kind of achieved as much as you can probably in the legato world I guess we're talking from at some point you weren't able to improvise fast legato runs that kind of didn't just peter out into nothing or didn't go horribly wrong and then at some stage there's this fluency in this area it's not necessarily that clear how you get there so i just wanted to talk about some of the the kind of steps so so the very first step of the legato kind of guitarist journey i think would probably be and this was for me at least going through and kind of figuring out this satriani kind of three note per string. That thing, now that occupied a lot of my time early on um, and was probably one of the first things that I really sort of practiced with a, a drum machine at the time. And it can take a, a real long time to get that idea of hammering on and pulling off. Um, to get that smooth and stuff. Um, and so my advice on this part is to, to not only learn it in, so the, the most obvious thing is to do like triplet things. So you'd have a dun, two, three, four. So a, a triplet kind of uh, ascent and descent. So I think uh, a shortcut around this and to, to kind of smooth out the, your legato technique earlier on is also to play that in subdivisions of 
4 or 8 or 16 so you'd be going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The reason being that, that if you're picking for each string change, you're going to have some that are falling on and off the beat there. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Hopefully that's going to um, give you a way to try and even out your picked notes from your uh, hammered on or pulled off notes, if that makes sense. So early on, instead of just trying things as triplets, which is the most obvious thing that a three note per string would give you, try and square them up in fours, eights and sixteens so that your picking is going to have to kind of adjust itself to be not kind of... Is aggressive and hopefully as part of that you're going to develop a, a kind of smoother um, a smoother kind of attack that's what you're aiming for with the right hand with the legato stuff really and people like Tom Quayle obviously can involve the other fingers um, in hybrid picking I think if I was advising people starting on this now I don't hybrid pick myself too much but I think seeing Thomas Griggs, Tom Quayle, all the Toms, um, the gains that they've sort of made with the hybrid picking, uh, I think that might be a good thing to look at. But again, I can't really do much of that. So the other thing to say is that what you practice slowly and what you practice um, routinely is going to be what eventually comes out and you're playing uh, further down the line when you can play it fast. So for this reason, um, although you want to start with these kind of three note per string shapes. So these were techniques that I used basically to learn the major scale in all positions. That's useful. But what I would suggest you want to kind of think about doing quite early on as well is kind of think about patterns. So you might want to think about jumping up in thirds. It's a really good exercise and doesn't really lend itself too um, handily to legato, which is a good thing to practice because it means you're practicing something vaguely challenging. So something like that, jumping up in thirds. You could try something like this, so you could ascend in four notes at a time, so... kind of thing is useful or you could kind of oh, and then it'll be the other way descend the other way with So that would be another thing that I would advise playing. So play these things slowly and gradually build them up to speed. One of the kind of patterns that I use most is an eight note um, thing. So you do three up, and then on the next string, And that kind of works nicely. Um, 
So, and also that could work over kind of stretchier shapes. So slower. Now run out of frets. But that kind of thing. So um, I think something I want to work on as well is kind of uh, broadening my kind of palette of that kind of pattern. So this is something that Alan Holdsworth talked about quite a bit about having permutations. So you could have like um, so on one string you can have one, two, three, two, one, three, uh, three, two, one, two, one, three. Have we already done that? Three, two, one, uh, three, one, two. But like, so there's a an amount that you could do. So you could practice. I think that's all you could do there, and then. So you've got kind of a limited amount of permutations, but kind of trying to build that um, flexibility in the left hand so that you can do different things. And so another thing you could do is to run up and down through the three note per string um, structures and do different permutations. So for instance, you might go one, two, three, and then two, one, three. So, that kind of thing I think can be super useful and I'm still in the process of trying to build those up um, or things like was a new discovery the other day um, and so a new discovery the other day uh, was what I was just playing there So that sort of thing is something that I'm going to be practicing. But the point I guess I'm trying to get to here is that there's all these kind of littler, smaller parts that make up what happens when I'm improvising a longer line. So practice trying this slow. But basically, if you put on a backing track or a metronome or something and... do this sort of thing where you're just kind of free styling <laughs> or improvising um, and you're letting your fingers kind of find their way around. Uh, Tom Quayle definitely talked about this, I think he calls it kind of building pathways and it's about trying to connect up these connect up these smaller fragments that you've been practicing little chunks of at a time and so you're basically stringing together these shorter kind of bits of legato vocabulary that's a bit of a difficult thing for me to say
that's how I kind of think about these longer lines um, and then it's just a case of building confidence and the thing that I'm doing when I'm playing these lines or what I'm most conscious of well two things one is not just just ascending through a scale I might try and make it a bit more interesting so I might try and do something like that which was more interesting to my ears and more interesting to my fingers and a bit more of a challenge um, rather than just ascending through the scale straight up or straight down that's something that I'd be conscious of and the other thing that I'm trying to be conscious of is where the beat is I'm concerned with landing on a beat or you know not straying away from the beat this is something that your fingers will kind of run away with you to some extent especially as you're new to it and what I'm trying to do is consciously be uh, aware of where the beat is and so that I'm gonna try and kind of stick the landing if you like so I'm gonna try and land on a beat and um, when I come out of this legato flurry whatever it is uh, when I come out of it I want to land strongly on a beat and be able to sort of execute a, a melodic phrase if that makes sense so that's how I'm thinking about this stuff and the other quick thing that I wanted to talk about was kind of directional not just directional changes in terms of, so I'm not just talking about directional changes as in like within that line there's kind of ascending, descending passages and all that sort of stuff but I also wanted to quickly talk about a thing which I'm uh, aware of and trying to practice for a while and I think the first time I really kind of thought about it and practiced it was in the Frank Gambale chop builder but changing kind of subdivisions within a line. So, uh, probably best to do this with a metronome. So this line, I'm gonna start with sextuplets or triplets. So this is deceptively difficult. Um, so what I'm trying to do is ascend in sextuplets and then descend in uh, 30 second notes or demi semi -clavers. I think is hopefully at some point going to pay off and be useful but so those are kind of my thoughts about um, practicing this line stuff first of all think about it as kind of small building blocks and the, the most obvious and simplest ones are kind of stepwise movement and you know then you can think about bigger steps you could think about patterns such as Basically, you want to build up as many of those little things and get them comfortable and in all positions and stuff. And then the other thing that you're thinking about is trying to join up those things in an interesting way. And you start off doing this constant stream of notes. recommend I think as well as picking apart kind of legato licks that you see that you like people playing you know so I've broken down my fair share of licks over the years whether it's an Alan Holdsworth or uh, Tom Quayle stuff or uh, you know whoever else um, Satriani stuff early on uh, Petrucci stuff as well as well as breaking down these sort of longer licks and you know the Matteo Mancuso stuff for example 
I think is worth working specifically on the, the smaller building blocks. And I think John Petrucci talks about this in Rock Discipline, but getting those as vocabulary and then stringing those smaller blocks together to kind of create these longer flowing lines, which you do at a slow tempo um, for sure. And then that gradually is your way into these longer legato lines, I think, that aren't just running straight up or down um, and have these directional shifts and that sort of stuff. So those are my thoughts on it. I think I'll put together a, a small kind of worksheet of the sort of stuff that I'm talking about here. Hopefully this is useful. Uh, my coffee cup is empty right now, but there's a buy me a coffee li link just in case you thought this was vaguely useful or interesting or got something out of it. But hopefully it was, and if you could like and subscribe, that'd be really helpful. I think we just hit 14,000 subscribers. We, I did. <laughs> but thank you for subscribing, um, and hopefully I can continue to bring this stuff, which is interesting in some way. Uh <laughs>